Hello, and welcome back to Hush Hush. I'm recording this literally right after the previous one. Police station, here we go. As you're making dinner, quills stripping over some catnip, you hear a knock at the door that sounds strangely authoritative. You pull your pots and pans off the burner and go to the front door. Quills already vanished. Last time in your life, you see for the rest of the night. It's clearly Fumi. The tall one with the glasses, yeah, Fumi. She flashes your badge. Good evening. My name is Detective Fumi Zweihander. You're German. I'm with the Sub Rosa Police Department. What seems to be problem, officer? Problems. Problems, plural. Sure. I have many problems, and you're the person who's going to help me solve them, I believe. This got really serious all of a sudden. Oh, uh, yeah, what's I'm up? I'm investigating a homicide that occurred in Sub Rosa within the last few weeks. We traced the victim to this address. Of uh, what? From what I've been a able victim? to find, you arrived in town only recently and took up residence here shortly after the victim went missing. What? what, what? In police nomenclature, we call that suspicious as hell. That does sound weird. It's true, though. Also unlikely. Fuck. But I'm sure we can figure this out downtown. With a little chat. Accompany me and we'll have you back in time for you to enjoy your... Buyades. What? Yes? No? What's your answer? Let's get this shit done. Excellent. There's nothing more arousing than okay. efficiency. Okay. Didn't need to say that. We're, you're a professional here, come on. Get to the cop car and Detective Fumi drives you downtown. She speeds the whole way with lights flashing. It's uncomfortable to say the least, yeah. When you arrive, Fumi leads you inside the building through a side entrance. Every cop she passes waves hello or greets her warmly. Hey, Detective. Fumi! Kicking ass out there? Hey, Swayhander. Brought back Spy -hander. something for the box? Not yet. We'll see how they cooperate. Don't say not yet. Fumi leads you to an interrogation room. She promptly closes and locks the door. She pulls, then pulls the plug on security camera. Little privacy. Nice, this sounds like your privacy. I'm feeling like serious trouble here. You're innocent until proven guilty. Thank God. But it's my job to prove you guilty. Well then, help me. So you There's a spider on the wall. Big trouble with me. Never mind, it's not spider. But and I'm oh, fuck. open Sorry. to philosophy, if it's polite, and doesn't stare at my breasts. Dude, are you fucking kidding me? Let's go over a few things. Stop it. You arrived in town on flight C69. Why is it that flight? On July 1st. Air ferry? I arrived here on a flight with an air ferry. Sounds familiar? The house you're currently residing in is a private residence, which you claim to have won in a sweepstakes of some sort. Yes. You have no contacts in Sub Rosa. No, no. friends or family. It's your claim you're vacationing here. Mm hmm So tell me, are you a drug mule uh, for a major criminal company no, 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 no. operating out of Sub Rosa? If your answer is yes, I can fetch you a lawyer, and we can be super quick here. Uh, I, I was with you until the drug mule thing. I don't want to seduce Fumi. This is a serious situation. Hmm. That's what I thought you. This think. is this is a very serious situation. I should not be Mostly trying to seduce the cop. Of you being a major in the criminal underworld is laughably improbable. <laughs> I'm gonna go do it. Fuck you. Anyway, it was worth a try. You'd be surprised how often that works. Just asking the criminal if they're really? guilty. Listen, I'm going to lay things out here as clearly as I can. Lay them on me. You stepped into some major shit. Yeah. And you had no idea, but you've been tracking it all over the place. I've been trying to save five girls. They all have their own problems, and they're all going to die by the end of July if I don't do some shit about it. Like, Eros had a major trauma in terms of, like, family issues. L was sexual essayed. I don't feel like saying the actual thing. Um, Kathy's may actually be part of the fucking cartel at this point. Um, and Mio has depression and is, has a stalker. What the fuck's wrong with Quill? The SPD has been keeping a close eye on persons of interest. And you yourself are one of them right now. Mm -hmm. You've been reported interacting with certain other persons of interest. Who? And we can't find any evidence of this so-called contest that brought you to Sabrosa. That sounds bad. Congratulations! You've passed the basic common sense test. Yep. 
That sounds like an insult, but I get a lot of mouth-breathing Neanderthals in that chair. You're ahead of the mediocre curve. Fuck yeah. In any case, you couldn't be acting more suspicious if you tried. But uh, your background check didn't turn up anything strange oh, okay, or good. remarkable. Yeah, no, I was pretty unremarkable for this. You're not on any of our lists. Not even the boring ones. You're squeaky clean. Really? It's like you've got a blank backstory. That's weird. But you wouldn't be the first person to come to Sabrosa and get caught up in the absolute underworldly oh, bullshit that yeah, goes no. down here. A lot of shit's been so, happening. So, here we are. We are. I'm telling you right here and now, you're on my radar. I can... I know it's not much, but I can promise you I'm not doing anything. If you come across anything that might prove even the slightest interest to me, I highly recommend you report it to me. I will. Yes. You are my lackey. My sub. I've got my sexy nine-inch heel boot on your throat. And there's no safety word. I'm getting concerned here. Are we, like... You've been making a lot of sexual st stock. For being professional, quote unquote. This is a bit weird. So, do the right thing and be my pawn out there in the field. And so, if you have nothing of interest to add, we're finished here. Can I get a ride home? No. No. Officer Beverly will show you out. I'm sorry, who? A hulking bear of a cop practices carries through the front door and gently tosses you into the street. You eventually hit. I'm pretty sure it just was a fucking bear. Beverly? Drives you home. Your something is cold and goopy when you get home, though it looks like Quill lapped it a bunch. We're passing on the top counter. Grab a slice of cold pizza and call tonight. Holy shit, okay, um, that was intense. Holy fuck, okay, um, yeah. Let's just... Cafe. Do we have a date today? Today's the 18th, right? Yeah, so, so I think we do. I left it in my car for more than... Okay, yeah, no, we've already saw this. Today. Just give me a lot of coffee. Thank you, Lotus. What do we got going on today? Bonneville in the evening. We also go home. We need to know more about Quill, I feel like. As you run home, you get a sudden strange feeling of dread. Reaching for the front door handle, you're overcome with a sense of deja vu. You pause, taking in the uncanny feeling when something catches your eye. A slip of paper caught in the doorframe. You take it and read it what it says. Do you have a customer you delivered? You're 100 can up. We hope you have a fishy day. And I thought it occurred to you that I actually haven't really seen Quill eat anything since she's been at your place. You rush inside calling her name, looking in each room. You find her in the kitchen with 10 or 11 open cans of fish happily snacking away. Oh, hi. I hope you don't mind, but I was hungry, so I'm eating these cans of fish. Hmm. Jesus. You should keep more food for kitties in the house, by the way. Kitties are a carnivorous animal. They need their meats to be happy and healthy. Want to join me? Yeah, sure. Great. Grab some food. Oh, not this food. This is my food. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it. You will go through a fish and cracker uh, banquet, including some cheese for yourself. Go reminds you that kitties shouldn't have dairy several times before staring at you until you share. All in all, it's actually a pretty delightful lunch, and you feel pretty charmed and happy by the end. All right. Well, uh, data. Yep, here's what they're saying. Hey, it's a cool gun, your kitty. Uh, the evening. It's very important, okay? If I'm not mistaken, I got nothing down in the evening. Fuck. Yours down in the evening. Can't do it. Darn it. Okay, I found a different day that works, but you're really ruining everything. Talk more later. Wow, fuck you too. Last time I was downtown. Not great things. Well, they were fine, I guess. While walking through the rough end of downtown, you must keep to yourself avoiding homeless people. Uh, yeah, so. If you're doing Philly, see how you care with me. You peek down, make sure it's not stabby kind. And see defective Fumi operating. Hands behind your back, dirtbag. I've got a taser called the Tesla Tickler, and I've been looking for a reason to use her. Alice, Callie? Get your hands off! Oh, it's this guy. You're insane! Despite her pro this protest, they're doing what doesn't even resist further and put me slaps handcuffs on him. <laughs> You're damn right I'm insane. I'm a police officer! Now cool your heels. I've got a few questions about all those purses you're lugging around. Oh, you fucking asshole. Uh, I found them. In the trash. Guess someone threw them out, right? Fucking bitch. That's interesting. And I suppose the woman I saw screaming at you as you ran away was just a jilted lover, perhaps? Yeah, I just broke up with her, and now she's all torn up, because she ain't getting the D no more. Yeah, thank you. Oh, 
what the hell? You can't hit me when I'm in custody? Actually, it's a lot easier to do when you're immobile. Fair. But calm your tits, young man. You'll know it if I hit you. While the two of them continue bickering, you notice a pile of purses near the front of the alley. One of the purses has spilled its contents all over the ground, creating a mosaic of makeup, gum, meds, and a travel, uh, travel size can of chips. Um, put everything back in the fucking purse. You carefully pick up everything and return it to the purse and close it. Make a neat pile of evidence and then sneak off before any awkward questions. As you leave, you catch the tail end of the conversation between the delinquent and Fumi. Hey, cop. I think I might be packing an unregistered weapon in my pants. If oh, you fuck wanna reach you. In there. Oh, it'll be too small to rise to a felony. I'm oh, worried. yeah. Oh, look. Mrs. Tesla Tickler has emerged from my holster. Yeah, no, you're literally I just sexually harassing her right now, today. man. The delinquent goes quiet just as you leave earshot. You did sexually harass her, so... It's, that's fair. When you arrive at the bakery, the lights uh, are off in the closest side of the door. Uh oh. You notice, however, a small heart shaped sticky note on the glass that says special deliveries, knock three times. You knock three times and wait. You see moving inside of the door to the kitchen, swings open, and a moment later you see Bonnabelle come to the door in her apron. Hey, sugar. Oh, look at all this looking. looks cool. It's not my usual level of hospitality, but I didn't want to leave the door unlocked. Some customers are not dissuaded by a closed sign. Really? That's a bit weird. How are you, baby? Yeah, sure. Just going for it. You step forward and kiss Bonneville. She happily returns the kiss, and her tongue gently caresses yours into her mouth. The two of you stand kissing for a few moments. You can feel an eager energy in her. She presses into you, pulling you deeper into her embrace. Bonneville smiles slowly, then she takes you by the hand and leads you up toward the display counters. I haven't stopped thinking about you since... Well, since you left me hungry for more sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do something special together tonight, and I confess, it's a little bit selfish for me. But do you reach the counters, Bonnebel gives you a kiss and leans back seductively on the counter. How would you feel about a special Bonnebel dessert? Just literally half sex with Bonnebel. She takes a small bag under the counter inside a can of whipped cream, a bottle of chocolate sauce, a bowl of ice cream, and a small tub of honey. You look really different. Your face. You're not going to be able to see YouTube, sorry, but her face, wildly different. Bonneval slowly slides into the counter. She genuinely touches herself, swirling her fingers over her clitoris, her cheeks flush red. You rush over, slowly slide up Bonneval's panties. She breathes out of a slight pleasure and relief as you begin to softly suck on the lips of her pussy. Jesus Christ. Mm. You suck and kiss Bonneval until she's moaning with desire. She runs her fingers through your hair and presses you eagerly against her. You reach for the basket of goodies and start by covering her body with a large poopy mounds of cream. Whipped cream. You cover her nipples, her clit, her belly button, and you turn her entire body into dessert. Then you drip honey and chocolate sauce over the top. Bonneval grasps her own breast and licks the whipped cream off her own nipple. She sucks it seductively, her eyes inviting you to take over, and you do. The two of you take turns covering each other like a dessert, licking and tasting each other until you can barely stand how extreme your need for releases. Bonneval leans back against the counter, her lips smeared with chocolate, her hair mattered with cream, and sucks you off until you orgasm with ferocious intensity. Jesus Christ. She climbs on top of you, reverse cowgirl, and continues to suck you while you get us as they're 69ing. Do you make love for hours at the end? Both of you are sticky and exhausted, but your body tingles and your mind swims with pleasure. Bonneval giggles. Pretty nice counters, eh? <laughs> when I had them installed, the contractor said they'd be able to do something like that. Yeah, no, I could see her on top of the bread right now. Or the cookies, not bread, sorry. I think he was fishing for an invitation, but I passed. But wouldn't you know it? It put a thought in my head I've never forgotten. But runs her fingers over her chest. That over my was chest. the most amazing sex. The most amazing experience I've ever had. The things you can do with your mouth are just... Yeah, the things mm. I read... The things I read were insane. I would ask if you'd like another round, but... I'm a bit too sticky for my liking, and I don't think I could come again if I tried. Man, just flat out saying come. How about a I shower? Don't know why I, didn't expect that. I got a suite upstairs I'm not using. It's got a big old shower we could share. Sure. Sounds lovely. Oh my god. Four hearts. After a quick rinse down, the two of you quickly move to her bedroom. She begins to kiss you again. Oh wow, that's a lot different than the other ones. Oh shit. Oh wow. Wow. Lay back the middle bottom against the rubber pushes vigorously, moaning and grasping in pleasure. Mm -hmm. 
He draws you to her, and the two of you have one final explosion of orgasm together. By the time you finish again, Bunwell practically falls asleep. You kiss her and show yourself out. The ride home is a bit difficult. You're distracted by the lingering sensation of memories and Bunwell's tongue on your body. That was all Bonnemo. You make it home in one piece. A plus. Finish all side character dates in one playthrough. That was all the side characters. So that was what? Eli, Alpha, and Bonnabelle? Right? Oh, I forgot about Lotus. You know, those are all the side characters. Um, which one is lowest? Buff. Okay, buff's actually getting pretty low. It used to be in my most one. You know, fucking, we'll do it twice, just because Hero and Cassie tend to like that one. Bonabelle, hey, darling, there's something I need to understand. I never kissed the way you did. Uh, it was like fireworks and cake rolled together. The time we spent together was magic. I just want to thank you for being so generous, intelligent, talented, and wonderful. I've, my I've got family consists of the rest of July I did pack, but if I get any time for you, I'll let you know. Gosh, I'm blushing like an idiot type and all this. Thanks again. Hello there, second of that, you're amazing. Okay, I'm going. Bye, sugar baby. So it's Bonabelle, Eli, and Alpha all done. That's crazy. Oh, wait, that's right. Uh, no time to play Mimi at the beach right away if you can. I want to try to make it happen, Captain. Joe by Cassie, you're about attention. I'm back and I'm hungry. I'm sorry for attention. What do you say? I can go on a date. Like your proper date, uh, fancy place on the, on the third. You're taking, let's say, Friday the 19th evening. Yes. Okay, that's what I want to hear. I'm going to get ready to rumble because I'm going to need to knock out. I'm so excited to never been in this place. Hee don't screw this up. See you soon, sweet cheeks. We need to head to the beach, though. Hero needs us. Let's see what's going on. You drive it to the beach and over to spot the beach and set aside for a motorcycle jump course. Oh, shit. You spot Hero doing donuts in the parking lot and pulling up next to her, rolling down your window. Hey, there you are. I was worried you were going to leave me hanging. At least there's anything about taking this jump. Oh, damn. I thought you were hardy. I could head on. But it's just you. Hardy har. Just a heads up. If you see a girl riding around on a bike this nice, she's out of your league. Fuck. <laughs> so, see, here's the thing. Yeah? I have always wanted to try out motocross. You know, like, jump! Woo! Crowd goes wild! Yeah? But my father basically threatened to disown me if I ever did something so stupid and reckless. <sighs> anyway, they're setting these jumps up for a competition tomorrow, and I kind of want to try them out. The kind is bouncing, so it makes me think you actually do. So, you're here as witness. And ambulance caller. If things go poorly. That's metal as hell. <laughs> right? I really, really want to try them out. So, is that a yes? Can you witness? And point a camera at me, in case it's awesome. But you please, do, please, please. You do know you need the right gear for something like this. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I once tried free climbing without properly learning the right techniques and got stranded on a cliff. I almost fell a bunch of times and needed to get airlifted out. That's a funny sight. Ah! I just really, really wanted to try it. But you're right. I don't want to smash my pretty face. I already did that in Look Crush Crush. Face. Can you imagine? Sorry, once again. Let's go grab an ice cream or something. Yeah, sure. You and Aaron, oh, you're mostly set to boost up to 50. Let's go, okay. Uh, anything for the afternoon? Nope, so we can go to the arcade or home. Let's go to the arcade, we haven't talked to Mio. Uh, you take a quick look for Mio, but you don't see her anywhere. I'm leaving at the same moment. And, fucking face some games. You spend a few hours working on the cars. I'm assuming that's increased tech savvy. Hey, it's wonderful, we're trying. More charming than alarming, you're looking at me to rhyme, poet. I didn't know it. Sorry, I got distracted. I wanted to ask you out on an outing. Uh, my brother's birthday is on the 20th, and he's drawing a big party. Nick knows you those snobs. You want to go with me? I can imagine anyone else might be able to make something wonderful. Yeah, sure. Wonderful, thank you. That makes me plus one. That's fun to say, isn't it? My birthday's up at the winery. Don't be late. Dorian makes sense. See there, my plus one. When is this? Tomorrow. In the evening. Alright, Cassie, here we go. Maybe we'll figure out what your secret is. You're over at the restaurant early, and a velvet... A valet comes to park the car, your hands up in a digital fob for retrieving it. When you walk inside the mat matri ID ma why am I forgetting how I definitely pronounced this word before. Match ma whatever. Matri D, non respectfully and ask your name. After searching for the reservation, he tells you to please follow him. He asks if you would like wine delivered immediately to your table while you wait for your guest. 
You bought the fancy one at dinner. Those who deserves you to be delivered at once, then leaves. You can't expect me to have like level 40 stats and then not be able to afford that. That's when you see Caspian escorted to Abel Macho D as he rose. Macho D. Macho D. I think that's how you pronounce it. He rose to me. He smiled. Uh, small and bare smile. Hello. Good evening and all that. What's wrong? You take her hand, kiss her on the cheek, and lead her to your her seat. It's only after you're both sitting that her smile quickly breaks into an urgent glare. Oh my god. Did you see the fountain on the way in here? It was bigger than my apartment. And the water looked cleaner too. Oof. I've never even stepped foot in this place. I couldn't get a job here bussing tables. The food must be hella expensive. Plans to steal the food. You absolute dipped. Don't be making fun of I'm me. I'm not making fun. I'm having a panic attack over here. It costs more to park here than well, my car. Jesus. As the sommelier arrives and delivers you a bottle of that, vintage 2003 at White Man from France. Ooh, look at this. Fancy table side service for wine. I'm more used to slapping my hand on bar for service. Yeah, I try now. The sommelier pops the cork and allows you to the test of wine after you confirm the quality. He, pour, uh, he pours Cassie's glass first, then yours without losing a drop. Damn. It bows and leaves. Cassie picks up the bottle to inspect the label. All right, let me check the label. Pulit Ray. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Roche, and then a whole Pote bunch Monet. of fancy French right. Potri Monet. I'm assuming that's how to pronounce. Oh, a bottle of French wine. I'm usually more Prosecco kind of girl, since it's my belief the Italians do everything better than the French. Everyone does everything better than the French. Say about it. Huh. <laughs> Oh my god, this wine is four thousand dollars! What? Did you know that when you ordered it? Why did you get this? Money doesn't matter, the company knows. You're really shaking me up here. Oh, hell yeah! I'm rattled! Look at my arms. I've got goosebumps. I was just a bit ago. Into a cold sweat. Um, but, um, thank you. I don't really know how to say a four thousand dollar thank you, but. It's nice. Oh. But anyway, the least I can say is cheers. Cheers! Oh, hey, I've got an idea. Let's both order the most expensive thing on the menu. Then, when we're almost finished, we cause a scene. I'm kind of saying. That way, we can have the nicest food, but still show up these stiff shirts and their overpriced napkins. Well, what do you say? Sure. I mean... Don't you think it'll really chop their butts? Fair. $4,000 for a bottle of anything is crazy. Well, okay. Whatever. I just thought it might be fun to cause a little trouble and get some free food out of it, too. I don't know if it'll be free food. The way returns and explains that the full course meal is a grilled yellowtail served with pon neuf and a capa aioli. I don't suppose you have any fancy cheeseburgers on the menu tonight? Maybe with some of that caper aioli? Oh, it's caper. Why did I pronounce a cap? There's a pause as the waiter is momentarily caught off guard by the question. Oh god, I'm just joking, you two. The blow ties cut off circulation to the humor parts of your brains. <laughs> You're no no less sassy than you are in Crash Crash. The waiter chuckles politely, finishes taking your orders and departs. Why is everyone so uptight in here? Do you wanna you wanna go somewhere else? No, I just I like to kid around a bit, you know? Feel a little out of place. Like everyone thinks they're what? better than me or something. Uh, <laughs> Never we're mind. I can live with you how paranoid that sounds. I'll just try to cool my jets a bit. Hey, so, uh, I've been thinking about you a lot recently. Thank you. Actually, I've been thinking Hopefully about bad you ever since you, you know. The, the cap, I think. You did that thing with your fingers and made me scream your name? Can't skip blood day. Can't skip by motor day. Whatever days you are or aren't skipping, please continue to do so. Will do. I've got a few tricks of my own I'd like to show you sometime. When you feel an adventurous. Just then, one of the wait staff is walking by with a tray of... Oh, the... oh my god, I've heard this word before. Hors d'oeuvres. There we go. It's like they're heading toward a banquet of one private halls. Cassie's eyes light up as the waiter walks by. She quickly reaches up behind him and takes one. She smiles mischievously at you, but while the waiter did not see her, several of the other guests give her dirty looks. Yoink! You gotta be quicker than that to escape my claws. 
Violence? What the fuck? You didn't get me one? <laughs> nope, you snooze, you lose. That die I would hate to do that. Cassie goes to eat the hors d'oeuvres, but knows the other patrons around her glaring. For a moment she looks like she's going to get angry, but her cheeks flush and it's obvious she's embarrassed. She puts down the hors d'oeuvres and for several minutes she doesn't say anything. After a long silence, Cassie finally blurts out her frustration and embarrassment, fighting back to- I should have known this dinner was a mistake. None of this shit is for me. <laughs> Sing around. Cassie overturns her glass, spilling her drink on the table. There's a momentary chaos as the other guests gas and white stuff runs over her towels. You watch Cassie run out of the front door and even throw. She barks in the mo motor D to leave her alone until she's crying. They're a copy meal if you'd like to leave. You decide to take them up on that offer. When you leave the restaurant, there's no... She's gone. Ow. Jesus. I'm, that, I feel bad for her. Okay, we need to make it up to her. And pronto. Let's see here. Cassie. Hey, I gotta tell you something. I just wanna say I'm sorry. Sorry for acting so immature. No. Because of ruckus and all that. I'm gonna thank you for letting me get off my stuff the chest. You're a special person. I don't know. you. We just some time. I got some shit to sort out with my employees. Employers, but don't take a silence for lack of interest. I'm going to gotta go. Take care. I'm thinking of you. Ciao for now, baby. We can only go to the beach, so I guess that's where we're going. But well, if I wasn't by to appreciate just how many people find thongs and bikinis to be acceptable in public, you catch the sight of a few people surfing. You receive heroes among them, and sure enough, you see her hanging uh, 10 on a particularly gnarly looking wave. Yeah, baby! Woohoo! Wonder for the surfers around the water, sitting on their boards, and they all give her a round of applause as she goes past. She rides her board close to shore, then does bounce and scoops it under her arm. One of the surfers that sure runs up to her, it's an attractive boy you've seen around, so you decide to get closer to hear what they're saying. Hey, Kelby! What did you think Kelby. of that? Kelby! Tell this girl to do a barrel roll. As she delivers. I was just super impressed you did it without losing your top this time. Kelby! That happened once! That's not what Eli says. Once? With you around. Anything else is no comment. <laughs> Just kidding, JK, JK. Here comes Wilson, punches him in the arm, he gives the mock expression of pain, and the two of them head to a spot on the beach. So, so hey, I wanted to ask. What's up? Didn't you mention that you'd met someone that was going to surf with you? I feel like you've been practicing more with me than anyone else. Oh, well, it's just that you're a better surfer is all. The best in town. Aw, oh, thanks, Hero. But when you mentioned it to me before, you were all stoked. What happened? Were they a major jerk or something? <sighs> no. Just the opposite, in fact. <laughs> I think I'm starting to, you know, get feelings for them. <laughs> oh, hey! That's great! Ah, it's bad. Just a dirty one. I mean, that's terrible. Sorry. I just. That's I'm fair. Still... Oh my sort god. Of swore off ever finding love and happiness. And living alone as a crazy cat lady someday. Can I give you mine? Please? But now. Ben. Oh, come on. Eventually everyone swears they'll become a cat lady. Doesn't mean you can't find happiness somewhere else. I know, I just. Surfing is easier. Amen to that. Fair. Too so quietly for a little more time. Well, I should add. Thanks for your help today, Kelby. Do you mean the surfing tips or the emotional encouragement? Yes. Haha, <laughs> right on. Right on. Take it easy, Hero. She heads out and Kelby watches her leave. After a few moments, she's gone and Kelby seems to be packing up. Leave the guy be. You decide to leave Kelby to his own device and continue on with your day. Let's go to the cafe, then head to the mall. See what Eli's up to. Oh yeah. Hola, aloha, and, and hello. Clean bean coffee house. God, your enthusiasm is so infectious, lettuce. It's just me today. But it's not. What can I get for okay, you? Okay, I've already. Here you that. are. Have a great day. Motivation. Go, oh, okay. Let's see what's going on in the mall. Will Cassie be there? Why don't you really drive yourself back to the mall? However, this time it doesn't seem to be nearly as crowded. Yeah, you've got some money burning a hole in your pocket. What do you do? Donate to charity. You drop a cash run to the charity for Red Panda Conservation. Tech savvy. Oh my god! A plus three to all of them. Let's go. So then, tech savvy is the third highest. Let's go to the winery, baby. Birthday party bash. 
I wouldn't like you. What are they? What are they? Uh, they oh, they're all above 50. As you're over the winery, two security guards immediately signal to drive in. You notice a small sign on the window that says closed for private events. There are already a large group of people wearing fancy gowns and tuxedos, and for a moment you can't help but feel underdressed. Yeah, knowing me, I would just be wearing like a casual, like, jacket and a fucking gamer sub shirt. <laughs> like, I have a jacket, like, it's a jacket I wear all the time. I fucking love the jacket. It's like a. I'm looking at it now. It's like a spray paint design. Oh, shit. A spray paint design on it. It's really cool. You take one, no sooner, and take a dip in here, grief and mine. Ah, there you are. The guest of honor's guest of honor. I thought it was your birthday. You turn around and see Dorian approaching, his arms opening and welcoming you. This is for $100. Good evening, Dorian. Welcome. Do try the champagne. It's a Noet and Shannon 96. A favorite that gets more rare every year. Maybe you should stop drinking it. Walk with me. Um, I, yeah, sure. I am immensely curious what Elle has gotten me for a gift this year. She told me you helped pick it out. Fuck. Poor gal. She raises such a fuss when she knows I'll love whatever she gives me. Uh, Marco, let's give her confidence. I boost. suspected as much. I share your assessment. The sooner Elle can come to see herself as you and I do, the farther she will go in life. Yeah. Ah, speak of the angel and she will appear. No, over here. You look over where Dorian's waving and you first one see Elle after a moment. You, her pink hair finally catches your attention. And you realize that she's wearing a beautiful gown. Elle, I found your date outside, walking lonely and aimlessly without you. True, my man. Elle sweeps across the room with perfect posture, her head barely bobbing with each step, her hands folded delicately in front of her. You catch yourself staring and have to break gaze for a moment when you notice Dorian peering at you with sideways. Good evening, Sorry, Dorian. You a pleasure to oh, see you. Oh, that is a pretty nice little gown. Brother, you're looking very handsome tonight. Thank you, my darling sister. But I fear I shall never command a room's attention as you do. I don't know if Hell's got the voice to command attention. Dorian leans over and kisses Elle on her cheek. She smiles faintly and then kisses his. Given the occasion, I would be pleased to sing a solo rendition of Happy Birthday, if it would not put you on the spot. <laughs> oh well, only you could offer to embarrass me in the most endearing and tempting way possible. No. But no, no. Don't fuss about me. There will be plenty of time to sing and shower me with gosh attention later. I just wanted to make sure you two found each other. Oh my god, this guy's, this guy's, this guy's a good guy. Holy Have shit. a great time tonight. I have many more guests to greet, if you'll excuse me. You're excusing them, man. Elle smiles in, cur uh, in courtesies, and you nod and Dorian takes his leave. Elle remains silent. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm losing feeling in my, um, my lovely lady lumps. Yeah, looking at the dress, it doesn't seem to help out the most there. I let Dorian's fashionistas tie me into a bodice, and now I'm afraid I'm going to pass out for the first time ever. Not due to my narcolepsy. Damn. Please tell me. Are my lips turning blue? Am I, um... Nah, no, I you're good. peeking out of this dress anywhere? Uh, uh, I don't think you are. I'm looking, and it doesn't seem to be. No, 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 that's a stark shade you're wearing. You're gonna have to rub it off later to check. You're like, I don't know, gorgeous beyond description. Oh, wow. Thank you. Goodness, I don't know how to take such compliments. You'd better be careful, though. If you make me swoon, you're now officially the designated L catcher. Take your duties seriously, I implore you. I promise. I will do everything well, in my power. I'm very happy you're here. These sorts of family functions are normally very dry and stodgy. I used to have to wear these enormous pleated skirts and hats tied under the chin and go about telling everyone how school was going. Fortunately, since my life is significantly less interesting than most of the families, they don't tend to ask as many pressing questions anymore. At That's some good. point, I realized that mundanity was my best defense in these situations. Uh, I think we were a movie star. Oh, Swave 60? My Swave is up to 60? Damn. If you're going to compliment me and take my breath away every time I say something, I'm just going to seal my lips. No. You're completely dedicated to making me blush. And it's not fair. I won't have it. 
We have at least an hour until cake and gifts and everything. How shall we spend our time? And normally I would mingle, but I do so dislike mingling. Any thoughts? Uh, other birthday parties I go, other church are pranking a birthday boy. My plan was to drink wine until everything was felt better. Well, I suppose that's something that many, many people do. But they don't tend to declare their intention to do it so... I don't beat around the bush. Recently. I don't beat around the bush. Incidentally, I must... My confess, fellow Americans. I'm not completely sure I've ever been... drunk. That's fair. I get it. One time, I drank enough mojitos that I found a flock of pigeons to be quite comical. But even then, I couldn't be sure. They were, after all, quite comical on their well, own. Well, everyone says when they're drunk that they're not drunk. I think so. it's obvious, at the very least, that nothing is bound to happen without a bit of courage. Isn't that what they call alcohol? Lick squid courage? I would... Uh, yeah, let's lick some squids. I'm suddenly suspicious that you're humoring me. Nah. But, quite honestly, that's a feeling I'm well acquainted with. No. I raise a hand immediately. Croissant, s'il vous plaît. Do you speak French? The server brings over a tray of wine glasses, offering Al a glass first, and then you. Al takes a glass of white wine. Once the server moves off, she raises it towards you. Cheers to friends. Cheers to you. Elle clings her glass to the earth, she is blushing, but her expression is happy, and you are un and unguarded. For the next hour, you notice a change in Elle. She drinks her wine a little faster than you do. She begins to laugh a little more loudly. Several times, the two of you are interrupted by other partygoers introducing themselves to you and wishing Elle good health. <laughs> Each time Elle seems to get a little more bold, she jokes with you, giggles more and more. Have you ever noticed that we pet our pets? Yeah. We pet pets. Pet a pet. Our pets want pets. I can tell you for saying you're drunk now. So, which came first, I wonder? Pets with their hands, or pets with the little furry companion guys? Cats, dogs, snakes, turtles, hamsters. What do you think? Kinda like fish, yes? We fish fish. Oh dear, you're right. Poor fishies. They're named after the manner of their demise. We drink drinks, we... We... Yeah, yep. I wonder if my name is a verb. Can someone L me? I wonder what that would look like. Be careful with your words. Okay. I think maybe now I'm ready for shenanigans. Shenanigans. What should we do? I would like to cause the mischief. No, let's run to be Gosman make up most absurd lies for other guests here. Let's play the penis. That sounds like fun. We are not playing the penis but I'm game. I'm afraid I'll have to follow your lead. I'm okay. not terribly imaginative, I've realized. I'm just as likely to say something true if I get flustered. I have a question for you, Well, How much could a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck could chuck wood, huh? How much could a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck could wood chuck, wood chuck wood? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, would a woodchuck be able to chuck this much wood? I don't know. It would be great, I'm sure. I'll give it my best shot, I promise. So if I understand the rules, we're just supposed to pretend we're gossiping? Didn't hear. I guess until someone interrupts us. Didn't hear. That Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle... Pickles. Peter Piper... Pe Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pickles. I suppose that means whomever says the most scandalous thing wins. Mm -hmm. Scandalous. Okay, I'm ready. Cryptozoo. Let's find our designated eavesdroppers and see That's if pretty we can scandalous. them up. You and Al mingle amongst the other guests until you find a spot that puts you in close to your shot of several groups. All right then, I'll go first. Just say Cryptozoo. Ahem. So it sounds like she ate at least a dozen cookies right out of the bag. Uh, must be remember the housekeeper's baby. Well, she stole them. What else do you expect her to do? That's a funny way to say, Reggie. Elle giggles, though no one seems to have overheard you. <laughs> My goodness, you have quite the imagination. Yeah, I thought of orgies first. Ahem. I heard her kleptomania is the only way she can achieve orgasm. Elle covers her face with her hands, and for a moment you're sure someone is going to say something. But a moment passes, and Elle looks around with urgent Did I suspicion. Did that too quietly? Or was that not as shocking as I thought? I don't know. 
My word, I'm not good at this game. All right, it's your turn. Uh, this isn't the first sex. First sex is in the sex. Well, yeah. Probably explains the drum of blue she bought online. Someone behind you clears their throat and says, I beg your pardon. Elsewise, wide in shock and amusement, she mouths the words, You win. Hey, <laughs> hey. Takes by the hand, and the two of you dash away toward an open balcony, leaving behind a group of confused and offended guests. <laughs> Alice laughing breathlessly, almost stripping in her hairs, though you managed to catch her. I think maybe we should hide until things cool off again. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. That joke went right over their heads, like someone poured a drum of lube on it. Quickly, outside! We'll hide in the vineyard until everyone remembers they don't care about us. Hold on, wait. Is this... Why did you call it Vineyard? I'm gonna... I... That's another word I think is stupid how they pronounce it. Like, Macabre. Or I guess it's actually pronounced Macabre. Fuck that, I'm calling it Macabre. Vineyard? Just pronounce it Vineyard, because it literally is a vineyard. You went out to send the stairway corner. It's raining a little late at night, and your wind is wrestling brisk off the ocean. Elle doesn't say anything. As you go, she holds your hand, swings uh, it gently as the two of you start walking among grapevines. The sparkle of the lights decorating the tr uh, trail sees Elle's expression takes on a soft, dreamy look. She gazes at you with half-closed eyes for a moment. She might fall asleep. Have you ever made love to someone before? Is that an offer? <laughs> no, it was a question. Truthfully... I wouldn't really know how to make such an offer. That's fair. I'm still a virgin. I've never really even been intimate. With so anyone. she doesn't know. That that's fucked. Okay. I that's asked you so a private fucked. question. You can ask me one. Things are good with your brother, are they? Do you wanna make love with me? I'm not who you think I am, Al. I I don't know. I think I do. <laughs> The other two just seemed like they would actually make her frown, so I didn't want to do that. I've never even kissed anyone, really. God, to think of what happened to her while she was sleeping. To now know the fact that she doesn't even know it? Ugh. I'm, People disgust me, man. I'm very confused. My heart is racing. Fuck. I want... you to kiss me. Elle closes her eyes and leans towards you, her lips parted ever so slightly. Delicately. You lean slowly, your lips hanging above hers for an impossible moment as though it'll never arrive. Then you press forward and softness of her lips surprises you. She barely moves as the two of you kiss, she doesn't draw closer or put her hand or put her hand to your cheek. It's over in a moment, but Al breathes a shuddering, excited breath. She laughs in spite of herself. That was a very special first kiss for me. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, we should get back now. Al dim uh, dimly takes your hand and leads you back to the steps of the party. You and Al make your way back inside and it looks like the party may be proceeding from the mingling phase. Hold on, I'll be right back. I just need to powder my nose. Okay, <laughs> you're back. Al takes off towards the steps and for a moment you're left alone in a crowd of strangers. After a moment, an attractive but hard-looking woman approaches you. Hey, remember me? Cassie's manager? Yeah, close enough. I've been keeping an eye out for you. You've been sticking your nose in a lot of other people's business. I don't want these five girls to die, you understand? Consider this a friendly warning, and the only warning you'll be getting. Get out of Sabrosa, or things are going to work out badly for you. Kind of cast is an extravagant affair. Where'd you get your invite? Yeah, and that kind of shit is going to cause you problems, friendo. You have no idea who you're messing with. Get out of town before you become a headline. I got 11 days left to be here, bitch. Think about it, but not for too long. Oh, I don't have to think about it. Returning your attention to the party, it takes you only a moment to find Elle standing over one of the dessert tables. Her pink hair is neon bright amongst the formal black and eggshell whites of the decor. You make your way over to her and sneak up behind her. Uh, stop the rub the bar. Oh, hello. Uh, excuse me? You step back and the woman turns. It is an LL of someone dressed almost exactly alike with a similar hairstyle. Hey, sexy. Do I know you? Are you related to L. Reed? You look a lot like her. Oh. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I can see how that happened. My name is Bella. I'm Dorian Reed's girlfriend. <laughs> or at least his girlfriend of the week. <laughs> 
Sorry for the mistaken identity. Dorian gets me to cut and dye my hair like this. What? It's a bit odd, but I kind of like it. Wait, 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 Anyway, no harm, no foul, stranger. Though, if you greet me like that again, I'm going to take it as a promise. This is making me rethink things. This may sound far-fetched. But was Dorian the one who did all that? Because if he was, fuck him. Uh... Excuse me. See ya. Looking around for Ellie, you suddenly hear a loud voice coming in over the loudspeaker. Thank you again, everyone. For I'm starting to not trust you as much, man. The fact that you make your girlfriend dress up very similarly to your girl, your sister, is worrying. Standing in front of the crowd, Ellie says, "Side looking so much shine up best." As you know, very soon, I'll be taking a sabbatical of sorts. I have a lot of traveling to do in the near future, and I wanted this year's celebration to be special. One last chance for you all to drink my wine. <laughs> How many save states do I get? Oh, 20? Oh, I should be using these more often. The crowd laughs, you do not, you do not, El does not. I've done my best to try and thank everyone. But if I've missed you, I thought you were please a cool do guy. take I'm a moment to, to pull me aside and you. slip me any last-minute bribes you care to make. The the more I learn about how dark this game is, the more I think you're fucked up. Special thanks goes to my sister, Elle. Can we have a round of applause for her? The crowd cheers and several people whistle their approval. Elle smiles but looks at least a little embarrassed. She put most of this together for me. I'm so grateful. Now I'm thinking about it. it wouldn't Maybe. make sense by the fact that. We used to pull her hair and tease her and all the other awful Big Brother stuff that shows I love her. This. The fact that you never told Elle that she was essayed. Which I, I could see why you wouldn't. But still, the fact that you, even, you didn't even mention to tell me that. Even he might have. We'll I might have forgotten, for but I don't think he unknown. did. There's still a chance Elle will be around for your soirees and book clubs. That is, if she turns down the offer to come with Don't me. go with him, don't go with him, don't go with him. I mean, seeing the world with your brother is probably not the most glamorous don't way to do it. fucking do it. But, who knows? Maybe she'll meet a handsome foreigner on the way and ditch me after all. <clears throat> Hello. The crowd laughs, you do not, else not. Yeah, so same. stay tuned for that announcement. Maybe she'll leave an answer tonight. Don't. Who knows? Fucking go. In the meantime... Even though I don't have enough time to open all your gifts, I wanted very Jesus much Christ. to open L. The fact that he's doing this over... I what do you mm. say, little sister? Do you have a gift for me? Mm. I do. I have two. Two? Wow. Oh, well. You shouldn't have. Here you are. The first gift. Thorin takes the gift and eagerly unwraps it, tearing and tossing the paper carelessly to the side. My word! It's Smell Private Blend Luxury Cologne. The very best. Is this your way of saying I could improve how I smell, Elle? The crowd politely chuckles, Elle smiles sweetly. Thank you, sister. I love it. I'll use it sparingly. You're wonderful. Now that all these thoughts are in my head, I'm that, uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. I'm glad you like it. And what's the second gift? I don't see another. No need to unwrap this one. Throwing by the shoulders is a moment where he's caught completely off guard and he tumbles backward, but he manages to grab Elle's arm as she falls, pulling her down with him. They fall from view into a large water grotto that runs throughout the winery. They hit the water with a loud splash. There's an audible gasp from the audience, and dozens of people run to the edge of the water to pull them out. Once they're out, Elle begins to laugh and Dory begins to shout. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dorian! Elle! What the hell were you thinking? Oh, Dorian, it was just a prank. The water is clean. You stupid, reckless, thoughtless dits! How fucking dare you! Holy shit. <laughs> you should see the look on your face. <laughs> You've been drinking. This party is over. Get out! And you, come with me. Dear sister, right now! 
You watch Dorian storm off, dragging Elle by the arm on the way out. You can hear Elle laughing to herself as you t the two disappear from view. You try to follow behind them, but there are suddenly bouncers and wineries that ever were shooing everyone out the door by the time you reach the spot Thorin fell in, but the reeds are nowhere to be found. On your way out, you grab a bottle of wine off the table. The ride home is quiet. Your cell phone doesn't buzz once with any text messages. Oh, I'm starting to think my theory's true. Holy fucking shit. Many other secret images I missed, I don't think about it. No. Fuck me, man. During the middle of the night, you hear someone knock loudly on the front door. You hear Quill eep in surprise and she quickly dashes out of your room to somewhere else in the house. Or when you feel a deep desire for the knock to have been a dream and start to drift back off. Suddenly knocking comes in a voice else from outside. This is the police! Detective Fumi, SPD. Open up. Let's go, Fumi. You rush in the house with your house coat. Uh, reach for the handle. Oh, not auto. Good. If you had taken three more seconds, I was getting the battering ram. You have a battering ram on you? Fuck you. Listen closely. I've got a dead body and evidence linking uh -huh. the victim to you. Now look at this picture. Give me the fucking picture. A girl was found crushed beneath an absurd amount of items she was shopping for. She was in the middle of texting you for help. Explain. Girl really just likes shopping. I mean, Casey definitely shopping. She's dead. She's dead. I'm she sorry loves. you had to find out this way. I had an uncle eat himself. Wait, hold on. To she death. actually dead? And I really do mean eat himself. Well, anyway, you're coming with me. I'm not letting Wait, you out of my she actually until fucking I get dead? some answers. Um, fuck, I, um... Uh, what did she say? Do I have to load back all the way over here? Because if so, that's gonna be fuck. That's eight days. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna load the safe. I'll be back. This is new. Apparently, Eero's at the vi the vineyard. So yeah, Mom. Everything is actually going pretty well right now. Dad's finally calmed down about the whole Eli wearing a dress at dinner thing, and we've actually had a few decent meals and conversations. Eli and Vance are planning a trip to Scotland next year. Eli wants to see the land of men in skirts, and Vance, well, he's always looking for the next weird obsession. He's pretty sure he's going to be into authentic haggis. And me? I'm doing okay. Well, mostly. I'm saving at every point I can now. The anniversary's coming up, right? I'm always sort of a mess during that time. It's not pretty. This year feels a little different. I'm not really afraid of the storm. If anything, it's almost the opposite. It's that deep fear, Mom. I don't feel it like I used to. Not like when I was a kid. When lightning made me scream. I'm just worried that it means... I'm forgetting you. I know, I know, I know. How could I ever forget you? Even saying it makes me feel like you're going to pop out and haunt me. I just want to feel... close to you, Mom. I don't want you to think I don't miss you. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I made a list of all the things you used to do during the summer. All the stuff I was too chicken to do. Jumping the clay banks, racing up Rose Mountain, hang gliding, and the best news, I think I found someone to do them with me, since Eli's a chicken. 
You'd like them, Mom. They're interesting and a good listener. Maybe they'll actually help me finish this bucket list. Maybe even the last thing on the list. Okay, okay, we won't talk about that one right now. I know how you feel about it. But I've got to find my own way too, Mom. So I'll take your objections into consideration. Anyway, I should go. Thanks for listening, Mom. Good night. The girl shows away suddenly tells you it's probably not the best to interrupt her tonight, you think? You go back in the opposite way and she was pretty close to fixing it the same. Well, once again, I'll be back once everything is hunky dory again. We haven't been to the pizzeria in a while. Oh, it's Cassie. And that's exactly what I told them, Mal. I said if mince number five smells like a grandma to them, then that was proof for their garbage genetics or their sense of smell. Sorry, I got you killed last time. Oh my goodness. That was so harsh of them. <sighs> they should not make fun of anyone for how they smell. Especially grandmas, because they're so cute and small. You bet your cute little booty. My Nona had heard them say that she would have stuffed them full of apple peelers on account that she never stopped making pies. Your Nona sounds wonderful. I wish I had a Nona. I only had linear algebra and an effective neocortical template. I'm not gonna pretend I understand what you're saying, Al, but I'm still agreeing with you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to do. Hey, what can I say? I'm just good people like that. I agree. Interrupting the conversation here, someone's stomach rumble, Cassie makes a face and leans forward, putting her head on the table. Oof. Why do I gotta hang outside Luigi's? Oh yes, I know what that sound means. It means your tummy is empty. You should fill it. I learned about this recently. Our bodies are you like an actual robot? Always making silly sounds to tell us stuff. Well, I wish mine would send a text instead. And maybe think about getting a job or something so we could afford pizza. Oh, I'm very sorry, Cassie. I would be pleased to buy pizza, but I never carry around stuff like money, ID, or pays in medical supplies. Well, that's okay, Al. I wouldn't accept anyway. It's not like we're on a date or nothing. I just enjoy the company. Me too, Cassie. More than I can ever tell you. here. I'm putting a save point here in case you can tell. I've been saving a lot now. Just in case. And I did actually need to use it at one point because I actually fucked up with dates. For dates. That might have been a fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I clean up. Alright, let me check the label. Gee. That's necessary. Aww, are you afraid? No, I just... Whatever days you are, war aren't skipping. <clears throat> you didn't get me one? <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna have to fucking reload that. Because I believe that's what ends up getting Cassie killed. Let's go back. Poor Rudos, we're not even gonna pay for any of the wine. Order the water. Yeah, yeah. Well, excuse me, officer. No, I just. <laughs> Oh wait, sorry if I'm embarrassing. Give her a hug. She hugs you back, breathing enormous high. I was just checking for some pizza. Dinner arrives really after, along with a common bottle of the other wine. Two eats make a small talk. After finishing her first glass, Cassie helps with the to finish the whole bottle. The first you feel a region foot across the table, softly rubbing against your leg. She has incredibly nibbled toes. Her voice is ever so slightly slower than one of the cheeks. You know, I bet you'd look good if you dressed with a bit more pizzazz. You know? 
a little more nonchalant, but still fancy. Cassie giggles at her own observation. Just to hear an unusual self and alert, Cassie's expression changes to concern. What the heck? Why would they be messaging me now? You seem concerned. It's... It's nothing. Well, no, but... It's... Look, I really like you. I mean, I really, really like you. And I've been struggling over whether or not to trust you. And I don't mean with, like, my Wi-Fi password. Right? Yeah, I figured. I mean, like, some real shit. Here we go. Here's the secret. You, right? you keep a secret. This is now everyone but Quill. I want to tell you. Tell me, I can tell you. You can tell me. Okay. Thank you. The people I work for, they're not good people. They don't do good things. They're bad guys. And I kind of, sort of, have to work for them. Because I owe them. What sort of work do you do? Well, sort of bad stuff. Not like bad, bad, but... What kind of bad? Sort of bad. The people I work for like to move stuff around. This stuff goes here. That stuff You're part of the cartel. There, and they get me to move it for them. See, stuff they like to move, they don't want to put it in a truck, whatever. <laughs> they want a pretty young blonde girl to deliver it in the trunk of a hot convertible. <laughs> the kind of girl that doesn't get speeding tickets, who always gets off with a warning because the cops like looking at her boobs. Ugh. So, that's what I do. At least for now. <laughs> at least until I don't owe them anything anymore. Do you... Did I just wreck us? No, but we shouldn't talk more, not here. Uh, right. Good idea. I'm... I'm so glad I finally told someone. I'm glad I could oh. tell you. Oh, we'll thank talk you. More later. I just need to finish this message. I'm sorry, this is looking really serious. I hate to run, but... Don't understand any great time today. I had a really special time. You stand to give Cassie a hug, and instead she places both her hands delicately on your face and kisses you. The kiss is tender like a soft goodbye before a long trip. There's nothing ferocious about it, and no one around you takes it for more than approvable affection. Before she finishes, she quickly bites your lower lip and pulls away for a fleeting moment. The two of you are perfectly indecent together. Yeah. All right, sexy. Sorry, I gotta run. I forgot how serious this game is. To watch me leave. Thanks for everything. Ciao. So a kiss. Catch you kisses and then waves goodbye softly. Okay, Mojo comes to show the answer with your bill. You and the monster do the slip. I walk the door. The valet catches on the way home. I have to go. Um, we're gonna look at this pick and then then I'll go. Uh, secret pick. It's just her with the phone. Take a picture, okay, that's fine. Um, actually, yeah, real quick, I want to see... Okay, we're not going to be caught up by... Also, my skills are significantly lower than they were before. Uh, we'll do this one run. Oh, probably because I'm not on the thing with Elliot. So if we go to schedule, the L thing should still be happening, right? Yep, July 20. Okay, so uh, I'll come back to that. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next time. I did not expect this game to get as serious as it did. Uh, peace.